Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and <clears throat> we have here 2021 so it's the latest uh, Mercedes GLS um, version and I think this is the 580 uh, looks like he has like an AMG package um, like you know some updates this and that I don't see AMG brakes so these gotta be like the normal um, I guess may maybe base brakes um, so I'll show you how to do your front um, uh, rotors and brake pads change. Um, it's not a big deal. It seems to be pretty simple. You just have you have to follow a few things um, around. And I already did this because this was done by a customer that kind of messed up the job. So I'm going behind him, trying to clean you know their problems or their um, you know the situation that they created. So. The first thing is I'll show you this right side because it has the brake pad sensor. The left side doesn't have it, so this is the one you know the, with the more complication because of the sensor. Uh, so first thing, of course, you take the wheel all out, and I would advise you to twist the suspension here to the left side in this case, so you have more space to work on this side. And you have this um, um, plastic plug that's right there um, and it's held by a inverted uh, Torx um, 10 um, it's classified as E10 I believe and you need to take this out and then you remove or unplug the uh, brake pad wear sensor right here and then you can just um, leave this somewhere out of the way and then uh, the next thing is you need to remove the two bolts holding the um, the um, the brake caliper um, system here and it's these two um, and they're right here here and here um, I already removed them so I'm just trying to show you what they are um, these are 15 millimeter so again 15 millimeter to take them out then um, of course, once you plug this and this is kind of loose, then you remove this. Um, get ready with a bungee cord, uh, preferably, to um, lift up this caliper and kind of leave it in a in a way um, that it doesn't hang on its own cables uh, or the the actual um, hoses, the brake pad or the brake uh, fluid hoses. You don't want to create like a kink or you know breakage in the system. And here um, you expose the brake pads and the rotors. Um, this is also very simple. Uh, you remove these out um, by you know pressing them out, this and that. Now I am not sure whether this system comes to um, this car. Um, this customer actually bought these brake pads himself. I don't even know what kind of brand they are. Um, I would advise you to get OEM Mercedes brake pads and rotors for numerous reasons. Um, I've tried them through the years, uh, even on my own cars with my own experience, and I've ended up getting uh, the best results with OEM Mercedes brake pads and rotors because they are made to work with each other. Um, they actually wear out evenly. Uh, remember, these the German cars actually... Um, use softer rotors because they work with the brake pads to stop faster um, I already have um, I made a video on, on my channel um, uh, a little while ago about this topic um, where you know you actually have to replace rotors and brake pads together uh, I won't even argue about it uh, there's uh, you can look this online whatever this is the deal that's that's it that's how it's supposed to be done and we actually do front and rear at the same time. Uh, because what ends up happening is usually the front wear out a little bit faster than the rear uh, but then when you change only the front you're kind of weakening the system in, in the back because it's already almost worn out so I, I like you know having the brand new brakes um, so that the car is you know it's, it's driving the way it's supposed to drive so um, if this if you have this uh, you know these pins these shims here obviously you have to install them on the new brake pads um, I'm not going to take the other one off, but um, it has the sensor uh, that clips in right here. This is the sensor you need to get a, a, a brand new sensor, of course, uh, because the yours is probably going to get worn out. 
and you kind of click it into this little hole um, it's supposed to have this little space this one doesn't have it so this is the only one that has it so um, it always sits on the inside also and to get to the rotor, rotor uh, of course you remove this part uh, and to get to the rotor, rotor uh, or disc, brake disc, you're going to have to get to these two bolts, these huge bolts uh, from here um, and use whatever tools you got. And that's going to be a 21 uh, millimeter right here. Um, again, they're in the back here. Um, this is this is where they are right here and, and right here. That's that. Those two bolts hold the um, caliper support bracket is what this is called and I'm not gonna do it because again uh, this customer did this on his own we're just cleaning up the system because they made a mess um, they use they use some kind of a silicone I'm not sure why and what's kind of reddish silicone that messed up the whole braking system so um, you take the bracket out then in order to remove the rotor, um, you're only going to have this um, this holding bolt here, and that's a T30 bolt. So obviously, you take it out, then the rotor is going to come out. Um, you get brand new rotor. Um, if you have the the gray surface here with the like this actual this kind of primer uh, paint that that's on top of the this surface here, obviously there was um, you know this paint here, um, but it got removed by the brake pad. Do not clean this. Um, um, you need to leave them on so that this actually gets worn out uh, with the brake pad. It kind of gets smudged with the brake pad. So I believe the reason is that it gets the brake pad stronger. Um, it, you know, when these two gets kind of, they get kind of married when they start working together. So that's like a, almost like a break-in. Um, they call it, I believe, like a break-in uh, period. So you need to leave this so that you know this starts with the breaking period and they get together uh to work better and stronger um so you move the rotor obviously oem please um the only other brand that i've ended up using that has been good actually has been um the um there's another brand called zimmerman um we have a um there is there's a couple rotors right here from zimmerman um this is the brand name right here so it's called Zimmerman um, these are very high quality they are actually made in Germany that's the only other brand that I have been able to kind of match close to the OEM uh, rotors to be honest with you um, but everything else should be uh, OEM you know try to use OEM uh, because that's the way this system will work uh, the, in the best way possible so then you install rotor. Obviously, you you put you install this uh, bolt back. Uh, kind of try you know be careful when you when you're installing it. So don't don't twist it too much. Uh, there's a risk of this getting uh, messed up here because of the torques the way it's set up. And I will give you the torque specifications on on most of these uh, in the description. And when you start a rotor, obviously you install the bracket this bracket afterwards with the two bolts the 21 millimeter i'll give you again the torques and then uh now this next step is installing these um um these the brake pads um also the most important thing um actually let me tell you one thing make sure sometimes these rotors actually are directional um the way you're going to recognize them, you're going to look at these fins, and then you're going to see an arrow on the rotors, actually. So um, you, have to, you have to find the arrow. Um, in this case, we don't have an arrow, and we don't have these fins being directional because they're kind of pointing toward the center. If, if these fins are, like, at an angle, um, that means that you have to, um, you have to actually follow the arrow and see what direction they go. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the um, the arrow was that the um, the direct well the, the 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 arrow points and like forward in in one place um, around the rotor, and it almost like it follows these dots here, these ventilated dots, 
or um, ventilated holes and the fins would be in the same direction like this um, following these these ventilation um, holes um, I may be wrong but I believe that's what I remember from the last times I did this and um, just make sure that you look around the um, the actual rotor and make sure that it doesn't have a um, arrow if it does and the fins have a direction like at an angle then you need to follow the direction otherwise um, you don't want to mess them up um, and install it in the wrong direction because instead of the getting you know the vent the proper ventilation uh, they're actually going to get uh, kind of hotter because they're not gonna um, uh, they're not gonna help the, the air to go away so in this case this is not the case but I've seen other Mercedes is that they actually have the directional fence and there's an arrow um, and the most important thing uh, I think of out of the whole brake job but specifically on this car and on most other cars when you have this only one side piston system is these these pin uh, holders right here um, they hold the bolts they hold the the caliper system and the reason why it's so important is because you need to get them out you're gonna see this rubber um, these rubber um, insulation caps here and you need to get these out in the Japanese cars I believe they are kind of set up with the actual the whole bolt instead of just in two parts in one bolt and what you need to do is you need to get these out both of them out um, some cars have a uh, one side has like a little plastic washer these don't you need to actually clean these and re-grease them that's like the most important job of the whole brake job that gets missed by most people uh, they don't understand they've never looked at nobody has told them and the reason why this is so important is because <clears throat> it helps the actual caliper um, those are called floating calipers because they actually when these pistons come out and they, they push on one one brake pad which is the internal one then the outside one works by you know being compressed from this side so it you know it, the pistons push and then the whole thing the whole system works well the only thing that helps the, this caliper to kind of fold is these pins so these pins are supposed to be greased every time you replace these brake pads and rotors because it will help to you know the system to work the way it's supposed to work I actually can tell right now you see I'm actually kind of having a hard time getting them in and out and they're supposed to be uh, kind of very smoothly going um, uh, in and out and kind of easily so I'm going to clean these and I'm going to re-grease them and I'll show you in a second so I clean this and I clean these so this is the first one then I kind of um, kind of grabbed some grease with it try to kind of put it in like install it in, in a kind of circular way so that um, the grease gets in um, and kind of keep keep um, twisting this so that this, the actual grease get in, gets in and it doesn't get stuck on the outside and you're gonna feel like instantly that this is this will start moving um, sometimes you're supposed to even clean the inside but that's fine um, this is pretty clean we just need to re-grease it and kind of test it out so now you see it's it's I mean tremendous difference this is the way the way it's supposed to work and actually when you install this and you kind of click it this is your sign that it's working you see as soon as you push it you actually have to like a, almost like a vacuum from the grease where this is getting pushed out that will help your caliper to actually work properly so it get pushed out uh, when you're not breaking so this is the way this is supposed to be you see um, and on obviously the old when they had the old grease this wasn't even moving like I, I could barely move it so we're gonna start the second one the same way There we go. And again, twist it around so it gets in properly. And once you get it in, you just press it and you see, there we go. 
it's just so easy to do these but you just have to regrease them um, if you ask what kind of grease you could probably use white lithium um, I've just used kind of bearing grease it, it's kind of worked um, I believe this is multi-purpose whatever grease uh, from Lucas um, that's what I'm using in this case but there isn't a lot of preferences with this grease it just needs to be kind of normal grease and the most important thing is to be re-greased so once you do these um, then you're going to be ready uh, to install the actual brake pad and, and this um, this whole system. So guys, we're ready here. And we can install the brake pad. Um, the one thing that this guy did, I don't know what he used, he used some kind of reddish um, silicon type of RTV deal. Um, I don't know why he put it on the most important places where you're not supposed to contaminate with anything. Uh, but try to avoid installing any kind of grease, bright grease, whatever. And the only substance that you can try to use... I use it sometimes, not all the times, but so, uh, it works with uh, floating uh, calipers and even the other ones that have the doubles, double calipers or double pistons. Um, uh, the only thing that you can try to use or you're supposed to use is this permanent lubricant uh, that is for brake pads. Um, this is from Techstar. You can buy similar stuff from other companies. And what you're supposed to do is um, you, you need to... Uh, smudge this in the places where the actual uh, pist, uh, the actual, like in this case, the two pistons and the side, the caliper will make contact with the brake pads. So you get this a little bit like this, and you kind of smudge it on the surface. I mean, just a little bit, nothing, uh, nothing crazy. Just a little bit. You smudge it and then you smudge on the inside where the pistons are um that will help to the brake pads to get stuck to those parts so when they come out they'll kind of get stuck and they'll they'll open a little bit because obviously you know your brake pads are not supposed to be pushing all the time and you can kind of smudge it on this side too on the brake pad uh but just not on the whole thing just trying to see where uh where the actual um um caliper system sits here and and be careful not to get this on um, not to get this on the rotor of course or the brake pads um, always be careful you don't want anything hitting this so uh, otherwise you're gonna create these crazy crazy squeaky noises this and that so um, again just um, install the brake pads inside the space and I need to make sure I push this, okay, and it's in, okay, that's fine, so this is ready, um, again, you need to replace the sensor, and now this is ready to go back, um, you know, make sure you always test these, um, and they should be okay, so the brake pads, uh, or where I grease them so this is it now uh, the final part of the job is you need to install this back and make sure you get the sensor through and push the push the pins in and now we need we can install the bolt the bolts uh, looks like the factory had lock thread on them uh, I wouldn't recommend it because it's, it may create a problem later in time if you try to take them off again. So here we go. Um, and then this.
again I will give you the torque specification on these so you have them um, I'm just doing this for for the purpose of the video and I will retorque them and check them again and here we go so this is done and ta -dum, ta -dum. okay torque these <clears throat> and then don't forget your bungee cord and the only thing we have left now is we need to install the sensor uh, if you don't have the inverted Torx 10 um, you can use a um, 8 millimeter it also works I've used it multiple times there's no problem with this um, because you don't need to actually torque it that much or tie it because it's a plastic connected with a metal uh, inlet so here um, you connect the sensor first all the way in make sure it's in then you install it in the proper place and you get it tight there we go and make sure that the wires don't touch um, they don't touch anything just make sure they're out of the way kind of you can reshape them a little bit so they don't touch the rotors or any, the rotor or anything so in this case uh, they're out of the way and this is actually the whole job um, so like I said it's a pretty easy job nothing complicated um, you just need to follow you know the several things uh, make sure um, mainly not to contaminate the brake parts um, maybe you know if this is actually rusted right here uh, your hub is rusted try to clean it like in this case because you're gonna have a problem installing the wheel back and you can tell when you take the wheel out if, if the wheel is coming out um, hard like a very hard it doesn't want to come out this is because of this part here being rusted so you need to actually clean it um, so main thing don't contaminate don't clean the rotors if they have the primer which they should have um, and the most important thing again um, I cannot emphasize how important this is you need to re-grease the guide pins uh, the, the one on the bottom and the one on the top because that will help the whole system to work properly uh, because if they're not what ends up happening is uh, you will end up like eating the brake pads only or wearing out the, uh, the brake pads only on the inside instead of but the both sides um, the like the inside w will wear off faster than the outside so again pretty easy um, nothing complicated um, and you know I'm trying to help you give you my advice and my experience here um, so you can do this job yourself save you know thousands and thousands of dollars um, and of course that's up to you uh, you know that you know your mechanical skills um, I'm just showing you what the guidance is. Okay, guys, um, I'll give you the torque in the description, torque specs in the description. And again, this is a uh, 2021, very, very beautiful car, 2021 Mercedes GLS 580, uh, 4Matic. And this was the description of the front uh, brake job, uh, rotors and brake pads replacement. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Please like my videos and please subscribe. Thank you.